My name is Chris Rinaldi. My birth date is 1-13-59. I was born in Springdale, Arkansas at Springdale Memorial Hospital. Good, and you've signed the written form, but we want you to say that we have your permission to do you, it. You have my permission. And tell me, who were your parents? My parents were Joe and Irma Rinaldi. And uh, they, they, they were, uh, my, my father was born in Tawny Town and my mother was born in a small town of Little Italy, Arkansas. She, you know. uh, tell me about your grandparents. First, you're on your dad's side. My grandfather on my dad's side, uh, his name is Nazareno Rinaldi. He came to this country in 1906 came through Ellis Island and then in 1907 he got he got on a train and moved it and, and came south to Tawny Town, Arkansas and uh, he, he was a farm laborer uh, there was a, Tawny Town was just starting to get their grape vineyards started at the time and then uh, in 1923 he bought his first farm or his farm in Tawny Town. Uh, tell me about who he married. He married Catherine uh, Taldo. Uh, she, uh, my, okay, my, Catherine was married before uh, she had six children and then her husband passed away. And then she uh, married Nazareno Rinaldi, and uh, they had one child, which was my father, Joe Rinaldi. There was only one. My grandfather was the only Rinaldi that moved here, and my father was the only Rinaldi, and he had, my dad had seven children. Uh, tell me about your grandparents on your mother's side. I don't know much about my grandparents. They were all passed away way before I was born. Uh, my grandfather on my mother's side was killed by a bolt of lightning as long as well as one of my uncles. It was a, they was working in the field. They came out of the field and uh, they to seek shelter and a, were their shelter where the, where they uh, was going for shelter was in an old cheese house. It was in Little Italy, Arkansas. And and they were killed by a bolt of lightning, an uncle and my grandfather. Uh, tell me, when you were growing up, tell me about your family, your siblings. Who were your brothers and sisters? I have seven or six brothers and sisters. Okay, let me go back. I have three brothers and three sisters. They're older than I am. I was the youngest of seven. And the names? Anthony, Agatha, Norbert, Albina, Paul, Pauline, and I was the seventh. I was, um, and I'm Chris. Okay, good. Um, tell me about your family business. What did your family and do when you were growing up? What was their business? We were farmers. My dad was a wine. He, he was a winemaker. He worked for Granada's Winery. He worked there for 35 years. Um, and then he retired after 35 years in the wine business and, and we had a family farm and he continued uh, raising cattle, uh, growing grapes. And uh, we, we, we were just a farm family. Uh, you said your biz family business was farming. What was your part? How did you help out? Uh, we done some of all of it from harvesting grapes, uh, tomatoes, uh, any produce on the farm. We worked in the winter time making grape cuttings, pruning grape vineyards, uh, helping other farmers in the area with whatever work that they had. Uh, it, mainly our occupation was we were farmers. Okay, uh, besides helping around the family farm, uh, what other jobs did you work for money when you were growing up as a kid? Working for other farmers, usually as farm laborer. I was a farm laborer and uh, I helped uh, feed cattle, I picked grapes on my neighbor's farms, uh, working in, in the poultry, a lot of chicken house work, 
uh, mainly it was all agricultural related work. Uh, what were some of your family routines at home? I mean, uh, like what would you, what would y'all do at meal time? Or well, we all ate together. We always ate 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 uh, our meals together as a family. We had a real tight family. Uh, my mother uh, passed away when I was two years old, and uh, we all. We were just a very tight-knit family. Uh, we always had chores in the evenings uh, from uh, just regular farm chores, gathering eggs, uh, feeding cattle, uh, just all kinds of farm work. You know, we, we, we done uh, pruning grapes in the wintertime, making grape cuttings. Uh, there, I would say we was just your average farm family in that time in that period in life we were basically like any other neighbor around us we were just uh, farm families grape growers what are your earliest memories of Tawny Town when you were a kid what do you remember coming into town what was it like and what would you do the big event back then was the grape festival the Tawny Town Grape Festival, that's one thing that we always look forward to every year. Uh, we, you know, to riding the rides at the festival, seeing all the other people from Tawny Town and, and meeting new friends from Springdale. I went to Tawny Town School for six years and was taught by the Sisters of Mercy. Uh, it, it, was a pri or it was a public school but taught by the, the Sisters of Mercy. And um, our school was even real tight-knit school we knew everybody knew everybody and uh, kind of like one big happy family that's the best way to explain it who were some of your friends and classmates at the Tawny Town School Rodney Penalto was a really good one Curtis Taldo uh, was another really good friend uh, I, I I would say most of all our all of my classmates were, we were friends with I can't say that I had a uh, Anybody in our class that I wasn't friends with, we all were pretty tight knit. Uh, tell, tell me more about the Grape Festival. What was it like when you were a kid back in the '60s, going as a youngster to the Grape well, Festival? Well, the the thing that I always remembered is we always had an opportunity to make a few dollars. We would go out and harvest grapes in the mornings. We would make enough money picking grapes. Uh, or doing other farm labor throughout the summer t summer months, uh, so we would we would save our money to go to the festival to buy rides at, at the carnival, uh, buy a something simple as a candy apple, a bag of popcorn, cotton candy. Uh, we had uh, we had a means of making a few dollars back then. You know we 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 we. Uh, Always had a few dollars in our pocket, and we we weren't we was we were never. I would say we was just your average American at the time. Uh, just with, we had an opportunity to earn earn wages. Did you ever, besides selling things at the festival, did you ever in later years help work or volunteer at the event? Oh yeah. Um, Washing dishes at the Grape Festival, at, at the spaghetti dinners, we would help wash dishes, um, clean up the Grape Festival grounds of trash. You know, people throw their cups down. We would go up there early in the mornings, pick up trash at the festival, help them set up tables uh, at the festival. Uh, just anywhere we was needed, we were ready to, to jump in and help. Um. Again, going back to your early memories of Tawny Town, besides the festival, when you were going into town uh, with your family, where would you shop and what would you get? Um, mainly when we were children, it was to the grocery store. I mean, back then in the 60s, going to town was like a, a one, one time a week uh, trip that we would go into town. And it was quite a ways, or it seemed like it was. 
most people didn't travel a whole lot back then, and we would all load up in a station wagon and go to the Harps grocery store and buy groceries. Most of the time, what if we done anything uh, uh, other than going to the grocery store, it was maybe going to my aunt's. She had a little a produce stand up there, uh, uh, just right close to our farm. We would help her uh, pick produce, hit, pick tomatoes, pick grapes. Uh, we 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 had helped several other the, of the farmers help with their harvest, hauling hay. We hauled a lot of hay for for beef cattle production. Um, we had really a nice upbringing. Um, it wasn't anything big and fancy, but we always had a good time. We always had a lot of good neighbors, good family, friends. Uh, it, we had a good time growing up. It, it wasn't a bad thing. Uh, we stayed about, busy, stayed busy all the time. What about some of your local merchants here in Tawny Town that you would shop with or trade with? Who were the ones? The Tawny Town Mercantile. Uh, we we shopped at Tawny Town Mercantile. Um, if it was something you know that we needed, like if it was, it was kind of like our convenience store. Uh, we would go up there to buy. Of course, we bought gas from local the locals here. Uh, Apco Station, the Skelly Station was here, and and a lot of the teenage boys worked there helping fix tires, pumping gas. I never did uh, work at any of the gas stations, but we we done a lot. Mainly, what I done was all farm work, and then um, we. Uh, uh, I was going to say, seems like there was uh, a lot of uh, mo most most of the the the, the stores in Tiny Town were uh, they they was grocery. Uh, we had uh, like the Tiny Town Mercantile. They had it all. They had hardware. They had a meat department. They had they sold beer and wine there. It was one of the only stores in, in uh, the state, one of the two stores in the state that sold groceries, sold uh, hardware. You can buy fishing tackle, you can buy uh, boots, uh, some clothing items. It was like a one-shop stop. Uh, the the, the Tiny Town Mercantile was kind of a one-shop stopping store. It was really neat. Uh, what about in those days? What restaurants did you go to in town, or what restaurants were here that you remember? Venetian Inn. We ate at Venetian Inn quite often. Uh, really good food, and there was a, there was another small cafe. It was called Alma's Cafe, and me and my dad, my brothers and sisters, we'd all go up there on a Friday or Saturday evening sometimes, and the food was excellent. In Tawny Town. Uh, there was also the, the Mary Maestries. We didn't eat there a whole lot. They had really good food, but uh, there was a lot of a lot of people did. It seemed like Mary Maestries was one of the restaurants. It was a little higher end restaurant. A lot of people from Fayetteville, a lot of lawyers and people from Fayetteville came and ate at Mary Maestries. We did too, but not as often. The really good food. Uh, you know, all these restaurants back in the day. Had the best Italian food that you could eat, and uh, uh, Jake's Cafe in Springdale. Uh, we eat there quite often. Uh, Jake J. Rowe was one of my dad's best friends. They went to the World War II together on a buddy plan, so they they were really good friends. But as far as Tiny Town, those were the only the, the two restaurants that we ate at the most. Um. Tell me, where did you, what different places did you live? Where did you grow up and then where did you move after that? I never lived? moved anywhere. I'm still living in the same house that I was born and raised in. I've lived there for 59 years. So. I never some, moved. If someone didn't know where it was or what it was like, how would you describe it? Oh, i uh, tell you what, I, I live on the most beautiful farm in this state, as far as I'm concerned. I don't have anything else to add to it. I mean, we we I was very fortunate to have a piece of land to work with, and I still have it. 
Yeah, we've, we've owned this farm for three generations now. Uh, when you were a kid, <coughs> a lot of people, and even before you were a kid, a lot of people in Tiny Town raised grapes. And mm -hmm. over the years, that sort of changed. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, tell me what you know about how we went from everyone in town raising grapes to now very few. Um, I was reading a, 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 a grape and wine encyclopedia the other day, and I had no idea of how many gra acres of grapes was in the northwest Arkansas and Tiny Town area. There were 4,000 acres of Concord grapes in, in, in this area back in the 70s. Uh, and uh, the Welch Foods Company, had, well, the farmers in Tiny Town had contracts with Welch Foods. They sold all their grapes to the food for to the Welch Foods Company. And then in 1984, the Welch Foods, uh, they pulled out of this of this plant here in Springdale. They had a plant in Springdale on Huntsville Street. They closed that plant down. They said that uh, they didn't want to spend the money to up, upgrade this facility. And so they moved out and also they, they let go of all the, the grape contracts. And so we basically didn't have a, a home for our produce anymore for our grape crop the Concord and the Niagara grapes. So a lot of the old farmers that went out of business, but we were more of on the independent side. We, were, we, we chose to stay in the grape business and sell them on the fresh market. So we sold them to Shaver and Sun Produce, which we sold them to for all them years. We, 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 we picked these, all of our grapes by hand and packed them in, in, uh, in containers for the fresh market. They went to heart, to the grocery stores all over the United States. And uh, so we were one of the few grape growers left that was, we were just independent grape growers. And I'm still, that's still what we're doing today. We're, we're, we're just an independent grape grower. And uh, talk about the wine business. Uh... How did you get into the wine business, and, and what do you do in the wine business? My dad worked for Granada's Winery. He worked there for 35 years, and after the Granada's Winery uh, shut down, I believe it was in the 70s. I think it was in 71 or 72 they shut the winery down. And my dad, uh, he started he started in, in the beef cattle business and also custom baling and cutting hay or cutting hay for different farmers and um, he was he was still making small batches of wine for home use and uh, and so I was in, I got interested in in, in making wine uh, my, my father died in 1974 even after my dad had passed away, I was making small batches of wine in my basement just to keep, kind of keep tradition going. And then my children, uh, I, I have two, two daughters, and they were interested in growing grapes and also making wine. And so we started making small batches of wine, and now they have their own winery. Um, there's not hardly any grape growers left in Tawny Town. There's only two or three of us left that's, that's growing grapes. And we're all independent grape growers. So tell me about your orchard. If someone knew nothing about grapes, well, how would you describe your orchard? Uh, we, we grow several different varieties of grapes. We grow some seedless grapes. Some of them are seeded grapes. And uh, we sell most of all of ours at our produce market or to the winery, Tawny Town Winery. And um, the, the grape business is, is one of those that, uh, if you enjoy growing grapes, it's hard to get out of it. It gets in your blood. Uh, the grape growing, uh, just the, the growing grapes in itself is, is one of those things I love doing. Uh, it's hard to get away from. And if I didn't have my produce market that I have right now, I really wouldn't need the acres, the 20 acres of grapes that I have because I wouldn't have a market for them. 
we don't have a market for our grapes other than the ones that we've created ourselves. Uh, tell me about your uh, market, your fruit stand. Produce market. What yeah. all do you sell there and uh, what's it like? Okay, our produce market in Tawny Town is um, the, 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 the thing that the concept that we have at Rinaldi Farms Produce is we, we want to grow produce and sell it directly to the consumer. That there's our niche market. Everybody wants fresh produce. So we, we grow produce on our farm. We bring it directly to our market and we sell it retail. And some wholesale, but not much. We, most of it is retail. We grow uh, tomatoes, squash, cucumbers, okra, watermelon, and cantaloupe. Uh, seven or eight different varieties of grapes. I think we have eight varieties of grapes out there. Uh, we do we do a lot of uh, what we say truck patch gardening. We grow small amounts of of uh, a lot of different kinds of vegetables to to sell retail at our produce market. Uh, who's your typical customer? I mean, who comes in? Who are some of the people that everybody? Come in? From Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, they come from everywhere to retail market. I mean, we have customers that come from all over. I mean, from other states. We're, we have a really good location. We are located on Highway 412, just west of Tawny Town. And Highway 412 is the one of the biggest highway entrances into the state of Arkansas so we have a really good customer base from wide from a wide range of folks. Uh, what about some of the other pro products you sell there? I noticed you had some rocking chairs and other things. Uh, we there? sell white oak baskets, homemade white oak, home, home uh, produced white oak baskets. We sell rocking chairs. Uh, we sell uh, fresh baked bread, uh, several different kinds of fruit bread, strawberry bread, banana nut bread, uh, cookies, uh, dinner rolls, we make our own pasta, cinnamon rolls, orange rolls, uh, and also we do um, Oh, uh, like pecan pie. My, oh, we, our big, big specialty at holiday time is pecan and pumpkin pies. We do a lot of pies during the holiday time in the fall. Uh, you talked earlier a lot about the grapes and the wine. Who are some of your friends and neighbors that are still growing grapes or wine, making wine besides you? Uh, we have one other neighbor that makes makes some that does grow grapes the Montagani family they still grow some grapes and make some of their own batches of wine and um, there's not many grape growers left though they're just there's there, if there's not a need for them there's no need in having them it's a, in a it's a very expensive project um Anything else you want to say about the grapes or the market or the, before we move on? Not that I can think of. Okay. Um, let's go move on. And I know in, in Tawny Town, the, the local church has always been a big part mm -hmm. of the community. Uh, talk about that. I mean, how big a part did, was that for you and your family? Well, we were, we were always, uh, we, we, we raised up in the Catholic Church. And um, but we um, I don't know we um, we had a really good upbringing as far as uh, being raised in the church and and doing different church functions you know uh, youth groups going different places. Um, it was just a, I would say, it was really good to be raised in the, in the traditional Italian tradition that we were raised in. I think it really kept us uh, kind of on the straight and narrow. It really did. We, we were, we were pretty good, pretty good bunch of kids. 
Uh, back when you were a kid running around Tawny Town, uh, when you weren't busy working on the farm, what would you and your friends do for fun? Well, go swimming. In a hot afternoon, we'd go to the creek and go swimming. It was one of the best things we would do, you know. I mean, just uh, we we worked all the time. We, we were we worked all the time. We always had jobs. And if we didn't have jobs, if we say we would be, uh, my dad was one of these. If we got our chores done in the mornings, whenever it was nice and cool, we was allowed to go swimming in the afternoon, and that's kind of what we did. We 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 didn't. I didn't go to town. I mean, it was just too far. You know, uh, I know it, does, it sounds crazy now, but we we just kind of stuck with our own people out here. You know, we, we had a lot of fun. We went to the creek, went swimming. Uh, I really didn't know, I didn't really have any friends in Springdale until I started going to school in Springdale, you know, as, we went, I went to seven years of, of school here in Tawny Town, and then and then on to Springdale, and we met a whole new group of kids up there. And uh, some of them was good, some of it was good, and some of it wasn't. You know, some of them kids you didn't know quite. We learned a lot of things. Let's put it that way. What was it like being the kid from the little country school out in Tawny we Town? Were, to we were we were well respected. We were very well respected, teachers, principals, and all. Very well respected in Springdale, Arkansas. Tell me more. Why? Um, because we were a lot. Of, it seemed like a lot of the kids from Springdale. Uh, they didn't have the opportunity that we had on the farm. They didn't have anything to do. Unless they, you know, I mean, yes, I'm sure they had little, you know, part-time jobs and stuff, but the way I kind of felt back then, we were kind of the heroes. We, you know, we always had jobs. We had some money in our pockets. Um, we had a lot of friends. I mean, the people from Springdale liked the the the, the guys from Tawny Town. They really did. Um, back to when stuff for fun. When you were a kid, what would your parents and their friends do for fun? Oh, uh, we would go over to the neighbor's house, and our uh, us kids would play with the neighbor's kids, or we would, might be vice versa. We well, they make them over to our house one weekend, next weekend we'd go over to their house. Bring a watermelon, have watermelon out under a shade tree. None of us had air conditioning back then, so we just sat out under a shade tree and, and made the best of it. Uh, rode bicycles. You know, you'd ride a bicycle to the neighbor's house. Uh, like I say, go to the swimming, you know, go to the swimming hole. There was, you know, we'd go to some creek, find a good, good hole of water and go swimming. We didn't have the choices like we had today. They're just, you know, we made do with what we had. We really did. Um, you've talked earlier about the grape festival. Uh, what are some of the other traditions you remember, like things and, and events in Tawny Town, like maybe Halloween or different holidays? What would y'all do in Tawny Town? Uh, Halloween was, we, we would, uh, Dress up in some, you know, old pair of overalls and a floppy hat or something, and and uh, we would walk up the road to the neighbor's house. And most of them didn't have Halloween candy, you know. They would maybe give you a couple of homemade cookies, you know, instead of you know candy, or you might get a a wedge of uh, some. I remember one of them. He they would give us. A, celery stock with some peanut butter on it. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have, you know, whatever they can come up with, that's what we got as a trick-or-treating, you know, Halloween trick-or-treat. It was pretty simple, pretty simple life. Um, or we'd go up to the neighbor's kids and we'd, they'd dress up and we'd, 
they'd go trick or treating with us. But there was only from from where we lived to the highway, there was only four houses. So we went to those four houses every year. <laughs> there wasn't many people out here. Um, oh, when you were a kid, there was probably just a couple hundred or a few hundred people in town, and now we've grown to a much larger number. Yeah, I, th I think when we was growing up, there was 200 people in Tawny Town. If, if someone said, explain to me how this town grew from 200 to what it is today, how would you explain the big major changes over the years? The city just grew this way. I don't know. I don't even know how to other to explain it. But the city, the 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 city of Springdale moved to Tawny Town. It just all went west. It didn't go east very much. It all went west. I don't know how else to explain it. I mean, I don't know if it was the choices of land or whatever. I mean, the prices of land went really high. Because of the, the you know everybody was moving out here. The the city moved to Tawny Town. Um, there was a time when you had sixty eight and then four twelve, and then mm -hmm. at some point the planners said we've got to have a really good road to Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and decided to really expand four twelve all the way to Tulsa. How has that affected Tawny Town? Oh, it's been great. It's good for business. It, it, it's very good for business. It just, uh, I mean, everybody comes down that highway, and, and that's how they get here. And, and that whenever they come this way, they're, they're they're spending money. They're spending money in this area. All kinds of businesses, malls. Uh, there's there's a lot going on in Springdale. There's been a lot of big businesses and a lot of major changes in Tawny Town. If someone said, what are some of the big ones or the bigger, most significant ones over the years, what would you remember as being important? Some of the important ones are? Well, back, back in, the, in the 60s and 70s, it was a poultry industry. That's really what made this country. The poultry industry uh, there's a lot of chicken grow or the people that raise chickens out in here. Uh, the chicken business, cattle business, and grape business all kind of went hand in hand. Uh, we would uh, raise chickens. Uh, Tyson's would, you know, send. I mean, it, it was it was good for the for these farm families around here. They was getting a paycheck for raising chickens. They'd use that chicken litter, put it on these fields that made all their pastures green to make more hay for the cows. It all worked hand in hand. And then uh, Walmart, J.B. Hunt, P.A.M. Trucking, uh, Tyson's, all that's what made this area. It's what made this Northwest Arkansas area, these big companies, because there was employment. People had jobs. Uh, a lot of other smaller t other towns in the, around the state of Arkansas didn't have that opportunity, you know. Uh, uh, people moved to this area to make a living. That's the reason why we stayed here because we was able to make a living. I didn't need to move anywhere. If you had to tell somebody who'd never been to Tawny Town, didn't know anything about it, and they said, "Hey." Tell me about your hometown of Tawny Town. What would you tell them? It's the best place in the world to live. That's all I can say. It's just the best place to raise a family. It, it was. I have two wonderful daughters, and it was the best place that I could have ever raised a family. It, the, the best. If you had a young couple or somebody that was looking to move and said, why Tawny Town? Why should I pick Tawny Town? What would you tell them? It's a good place to raise the family. That's the only way I can say it. That's really, it's just like Harbor Meadows up here. I mean, golly, that was nothing but a big cow pasture. And everybody wants to move there. It's just a good place. I don't know how else to explain it. I have no idea. Okay, finish this sentence for me. My favorite thing about Tawny Town is? The people. Just the people that live out here. We see it every weekend 
on this deck out here. There's hundreds of people show up at this winery, live music. All my kids' friends, they all live right around here. Most of them live pretty close. It's the best bunch of, but I could say kids, they're 30 and 40 years old now. <clears throat> but what I'm saying is, is uh, they, there's nothing else. It's the best kept secret in Northwest Arkansas is what this winery's got going on. It really is. What have I not thought to ask about that you want to mention? Um, the, I'm glad you're, that someone is doing these interviews because all this history could be lost. All these, everybody that do, does these interviews, the, the two books that they've written. Um, a, lot of, a lot of these little towns, you know, they, there was a lot of history, but nobody ever wrote anything down about them. You know, they may have a little plaque, you know, saying, well, this is, you know, what happened back in the 60s or whatever, but there was never, there was never, <clears throat> the only thing that I regret that this town didn't do is they should have started this this uh, collecting history 50 years before they started, before they did start writing things down as far as the history. There is a lot of history out in here. There is, there's a lot of history. I mean, the people that know the most history are dead. They're gone.